I think we're live. All right, sounds good. There's a lag in my YouTube screen. Oh, there we go. Okay, good. All right, now let me turn that off because that's going to be a pain in the ass otherwise. What's up, everybody? Hey. <laughs> and thank also, you for having me. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Danielle, for being a part of this. Really appreciate it. Um, for those of you that are new to what I'm doing here, it's called Form Terror Fridays. And basically, it's a, it's a hangout with artists. We get to talk process and technique and influence and inspiration and everything in between. And I've got a comment section that can be, you know, we're more than welcome. Uh, you're more than welcome to ask questions and we'll have, you know, uh, time to answer those questions. And uh, yeah, we're just trying to have a good, good amount of fun here. It's Friday, so let's fucking hang. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Once again, Danielle, thank you so much for uh, being a part of this. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. This is super cool. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. If, uh, if you're not familiar with Danielle's work, I encourage you to check it out on Instagram. You can see it as Medeus underscore art. It's fucking fantastic. It's uh, lycanthropic. I fucking love that word, by the way. It's just like, I don't know. <laughs> it's, just it's just so fun to say. Like, yeah. It's just a rad word to to talk about werewolves. Um, so here I wanted to just real quick shout out my aunt and uncle for <laughs> supplying me with this beverage uh, today. I don't think they're going to see this, but maybe they will. I don't know. Um, it's called Duvel. I've never had it. It's a Belgian strong blonde. And I'm excited. Uh, they gave me a four pack uh, for like an early Christmas gift. They gave me a glass with it. So fucking, I'm going to open this up, pour it, drink it while we're talking and uh, encouraging everyone else to uh, at home, crack a beverage, drink a water, no judgment, alcohol, non-alcohol, you do your thing. Um, all right. So how are you? What's going on in your life, Danielle? Oh, I'm, I'm chilling. I mean... Um, as like some people might know, I'm currently like a full time college student and I'm getting a degree in biology and I just finished up my finals. So now I'm like chill. So now I can actually start doing some art again, start relaxing. Yeah. So I've been I've been great. I haven't Very been able nice. to devote as much time to art as I'd like to lately. But now that I'm on break, yeah, I'm going to be drawing yeah. constantly. Sure. I mean, isn't that just the struggle of like being mm -hmm. able to make art? uh when you want to and having the time it's 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 just such a it, it's yeah a, it's, it's definitely difficult to be able to carve out time uh especially you know with like such a full-time uh student schedule that's got to mm -hmm. be challenging for sure yeah i mean uh so as far as werewolves go like where mm -hmm. did this i don't know if i want to say obsession but where where did say this obsession. interest <laughs> um sprout from where did it where did it come from originally for you i don't know i'm not really sure it's hard to like really think about it in that way because just like since i was a kid i was always like an animal kind of person you know right i was the little kid that was like pretending to be like a wolf or something on the playground you know that sort of that sort of shit was always me as a kid and then i guess like <laughs> I probably, I don't know, I probably watched, like, Van Helsing when I was, like, 10, and I was, like, that's sick. Like, that's hella cool. And yeah, then, you yeah. know, yeah, on the internet, early 2000s, so, you know, watching, like, edits with, like, the, you know, like, werewolf clips to, like, edgy music, and I was, like, that is so sick. And so, here I am. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Uh, I just want to say hello to my buddy hugh coin he's uh an old friend i haven't seen him in a minute thank you for joining us guys ian Hales, fuck yeah love you buddy awesome artist um yeah so yeah i mean werewolves are just so like there's like something about the idea of like becoming this this creature um, yeah from a full moon and just devouring things and then just mm -hmm. waking up and not realizing what the hell you did got yeah blood all over you you may yeah. or may not be naked probably mm -hmm. naked probably <laughs> <laughs> after after your clothes are ruined every time mm -hmm. um i always thought that was such a funny like uh 
aspect of the idea behind it uh, mm -hmm. as far as like when you turn um i think they did that on uh, what we do in the shadows yeah about that that's mm -hmm. funny as hell yeah um, and i'm sure you're uh, a big fan of american War werewolf in london oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. sick of course yeah no oh, just yeah. like the whole concept of like the transformation always really appealed to me like because then artistically you can express that so many different ways like even if you just look at different like werewolf media you can see like the different transformation techniques and like all the different designs. Like it's a lot of like endless opportunity in a way. And I think that's just so cool to think about like how like your body would just like change. That's just yeah, so cool. It is super rad. Um, with that said, we've got a bunch of different pieces that we can take a look at a little bit more uh, uh, closely. And yeah. I'm, I'm really stoked to be able to do that. Um, thank you for sending these in. Yeah, no uh, worries. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's so funny. Uh, my my buddy Jimmy was like, "I love he's holding a ball sack." Oh I'm yeah, pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is uh, a, a disembodied, like a uh, a torso with a with, yeah. a, with a juicy butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that particular one was based off of the uh, Saturn eating his son. That nice. one portrait, and yeah, so Goya. yeah, the goal, yeah, Goa, yeah, yeah, and so. Hell that yeah. was my inspiration for that, but maybe it will be a ball sack now. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's not a ball sack. You can do another one with a ball sack. Yeah. <laughs> well, hell yeah. I really love the treatment of the fur here. This is pen and ink, right? <clears throat> yes, it is. Yeah. I just use um, just these little micron pens for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, so you're a fan of micron. Have you ever tried out any other brands like Stadler or? Uh, I have uh, not. I just like. Sometimes I just get into a groove of like, I know what like works for me for now. And like, mm. I tend to not branch out with the materials, but I've heard good things about the other ones. And yep. it's not like a brand loyalty thing or anything. Right. It's just like, I'm used to it. And it's just kind of second nature to go for them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, fair enough. I, I mean, mm -hmm. for a long time, I used Microns just because I didn't mm -hmm. really know there were other brands out there or just didn't really know if they were the same thing like i didn't know you know what stadler or uh yeah i can't even think of other companies uh right now but i use stadler i like mm -hmm. how um the longevity of them okay so i encourage you know trying them out uh i feel like they don't get as bent um okay as easily mm -hmm. and i also find that um the the tips like will will last a little longer um and then on top of that, um, I've been told that Micron doesn't hold its black after a while. Yeah, it definitely does, especially the bigger like pen sizes, like mm -hmm. the tips will stop kind of holding that black value that I like. And right. that, that's a pain in the ass. So if the other ones don't do that, that that's awesome. Yeah, give it a shot. I mean, mm -hmm. the, you might you might still think that the Microns are more comfortable in some aspects because, you know, if you get used to using a certain medium, Mm -hmm. you, sometimes you'd lean in and embrace the things that happen naturally, like having less ink come onto the paper because it's like mm -hmm. used a little more could essentially be used to your advantage when it comes to like a texture that you're trying to, yeah. uh, you know, uh, obtain. So, you know, like, I, I think it's, it's, it's different for everybody, but mm -hmm. um, it is really awesome to be able to see the treatment that you put into this, this fur. It's, it's fucking cool. Um, and I also, I'm seeing the stippling is reminiscent to something I would see like Puss Head or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, a little later, Baisley, uh, Richie Beckett, things like that, where like you're treating the flesh um, with that stippling texture. And it, it's, it's really well done. So thank you. Yeah. Like That's in my head, like I'm so used to doing like the more like clean, I guess, lines with like the fur that when I get to something that's more like smooth, like the flesh, like it like forces me to use like a different just shading technique because I can't like do the lines as well on like the kind of smooth texture I'm feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, I, I lagged on uh, showing some of these uh, these comments. So I just wanted to take a quick second. Ian yeah. said American Werewolf is one of the best werewolf movies. Mm -hmm. Definitely agree there. I'd agree. Um, yeah. 
Oh, what's up, Maury Bond? This fucking <laughs> he's a beast with uh with pen and ink as well. Uh, mm-hmm. If Stadler has a zero zero five, I'm a die. So tired of destroying those. They mm-hmm. do have a zero zero five. <laughs> I use it all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, for those of you that might not understand what we're talking about, it's the size of the tip of the. Uh, I guess I don't know if it's called a nib, but it's the size of the tip of the pen itself. And zero zero five is sometimes the limit of uh, mm-hmm. certain brands, and then some do zero zero three, which I really have been enjoying. Um, when I'm making smaller pieces, but that's just, it's like a whole other thing. It's very fine, fine mm-hmm. you know, lines. So you have to be really careful not to fuck up the tips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the worst. You just knock it against something and it like kind of flattens out. Yeah. <laughs> Ian said rot rings are pretty cool. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> Neither do I, but he says it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. <laughs> and then uh Moribund said uh he sold all right so yeah uh so this piece um with the texture that you're like the way that you're treating the hair um is there any artist that you would specifically like to consider uh an influence in the way that you do this hmm, i'm trying to think i remember i don't know the artist but one of the satanic war master album covers that has like this hair treatment where it's all like Mm. kind of flowy and it's all like in these lines i remember seeing that and i just really liked the way that like the lines work right and so i guess that could be probably an influence of that but i honestly have no idea who made that piece though okay right on um well, I mean, I feel like there's some reminiscence to uh, a lot of different, like, older artists. But I guess I keep coming back to, um, like, in this, I feel like I know that there are a lot of other artists that, that did hair in this treatment. But um, but I feel like, again, I basically did a lot of this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. especially juxtaposed with the flesh, um, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Um, I feel like everybody like renders, um, hair differently. So it's yeah. always cool to just kind of explore and ask like the questions about the way that these things are rendered, but really nice job. I'm um, going to move on to the next piece if that's cool. Yeah. Sounds good. Oh yeah. So yeah, I really do enjoy just how much on theme you stay like <laughs> you you locked into something that you're passionate about and now mm-hmm. you're just expounding on that you're just doing what you know you're you're into um Ooh. without kind of you know, and and not to say that it, like this is a a, a a bad thing or a bad decision mm-hmm. or anything like that like i think it's sick because there's not a lot of artists that will like stay in one lane all the time like yeah I mean, obviously, like stylistically, yes, mm-hmm. and they're just they like vary their subject matter. But it is cool to like see someone that just embraces like one idea in different ways. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and yeah. usually it's not even super intentional. It's just like I'll be chilling and I'll be thinking like, okay, I want to start making a new piece, and just like that's usually just the first thing that comes to mind. Like I can just kind of like envision something I want to make, and it's usually along the same lines as what I've been doing before and it just kind of comes naturally honestly nice I really like the uh the feet and the hands and the choice to make this just solid black is always cool um it's 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 always like a point of interest in mind when the about the decisions made um with dark and light and how stark Mm -hmm. black you're gonna go and how light you're gonna stay like you know, how much you're going to um, put ink on the paper versus how much you're going to uh, not yeah. <laughs> not put ink on the paper at all for those conscious decisions in light and darkness. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is really cool. And it's it's always interesting to see, like, the shapes that it makes, like, yeah. the, the decisions to, like, keep those shapes. Did you have reference doing any of this? Yeah, typically um, not as much for the shading, but whenever I'll be doing something like this, I'll have references just for like the pose or like anatomy essentially. And it'll be like the most embarrassing thing, just like kind of posing and 
taking pictures just so I can see like the way that like the muscle would look and then that'll just influence how I'll make the hair kind of laying on like the leg or something. Yes. So I'll typically um, do like I, pose can, references. I can completely relate. Uh, <laughs> I think most artists uh, have like a weird never to be shown to the public file yeah. of them in probably underwear doing <laughs> Yeah, all of like the, most the most ridiculous poses so yeah. that they can get the reference enough to execute whatever they're trying to draw. Because that is like, I think that's like a tool of the trade. Like that's mm -hmm. like part of the part of the job is uh, making sure the the reference is right. And mm -hmm. uh, and I always feel like I always kick myself when I try to like beat around the bush about it. Like when I yeah. try to like cut corners. I'm like, yeah. yep, you try to like look this up. to yourself, man. Like, you should have taken a half naked picture of yourself in this pose, <laughs> but you didn't. So, like, yeah. this is on you, man. <laughs> Luckily for me, yeah, so many of my references everything. are just like yeah. a hand. So, I'll just have so many pictures of just like my hand, like this or like that. Or oh, something. yeah. Oh, totally. Or like, I'll be drawing and I'll like have my left hand up. So, I'm just like looking at it. And it's a little less embarrassing than having to do the full body, like pictures <laughs> for sure for sure for sure uh ian wanted to uh answer the question about what he said earlier rotch rings um mm -hmm. they're a brand of isograph slash rapidograph pens refillable ink oh. cartridges i definitely oh. remember giving that a shot and being like this is gonna change everything and then i was like I can't clean these like fast enough. Like I just feel like I clog them up so quickly. And um, I don't know if you ever had uh, any experience with rapidograph pens, but it's I've maintenance. Not. <laughs> it's just a lot of extra work that my brain like like it's like one of those things where uh, it's a little bit of an ADHD thing. Like it's a hack for me to just use pens instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, like the references, man, they're, they're important. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's like putting off using them is, uh, is always going to come back to bite you in the ass. Like for certain yeah. things, like, uh, you know, and, and I feel like as artists, you learn that over time, like trying to shirk off that little responsibility of doing it without reference, like it always shows. And mm -hmm. sometimes you like you can really lean in and, and embrace that and it looks sick and it's like cool um there's a lot of like 90s death metal demo cover like artworks mm -hmm. that like clearly like weren't like super studying anatomy and like yeah embracing like uh, uh uh extremities being like stretched out and exaggerated mm -hmm. and things like that which is really cool but you know there's a time and a place for it and yeah um, i feel like you know, for me, like, I've definitely kind of struggled to, like, put that as priority. Mm -hmm. And it always just ends up reminding me halfway through the piece. I'm like, I mean, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I used to, like, when I was drawing, like, earlier, I used to be so shit at just, like, finding references. Because I was like, well, I can, I can just wing it. But then, mm -hmm. like, as I started, A, just started doing bio, I'm like, no, mm -hmm. I, like, in my head, like, now I want it to be, like, yeah. correct, you know? Yeah. And then as I'm doing, like, the werewolves, I think it's an interesting challenge to, like, kind of come up with, like, how, like, a hybrid anatomy would present itself. Exactly. And so I'll be looking at, like, human anatomy, baboon anatomy, wolf anatomy, and, like, kind of blending it all together. Nice. And so it made me take a references a little more seriously <laughs> right on i mean that is tough to kind of mishmash uh mm -hmm. references sometimes but when it's done well oops when it's done well you know um it's like you can't even tell and it's rad mm -hmm. um and i think you did a, a, a great job with that thank um, you this is a really smart piece i really love um what you decided to do um as far as highlighting the fur mm -hmm. um like as if it's a silhouette and the furs being, you know, illuminated from the moon behind it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and just like the, the simplicity of the trees ending where the moon is. That's really cool. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to go for a more like exaggerated with shading. Cause typically mm -hmm. whenever I'm sort of like rendering the fur, 
it'll be more like in my head rendering like individual clumps of fur or like pieces of fur yeah. and in this one i'm like i want to stay away from doing like the individual pieces and just do more of like the just focus on like the values of the light and dark mm -hmm. and also i wanted to get this piece out quicker i i wanted to give myself like a little challenge and so i wanted to do like the more like simplified stark black and white and yeah i mean yeah it, it goes a long way when you just make decisions to keep things simple if you're being cognizant of like how to present something in that way mm -hmm. you know it's 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 often effective to the point where people are you know, just as stoked about something that you would do that has more detail and, and mm -hmm. attention, you know, with time and things like that. And I feel like um, someone kind of talked to me about that the other day, because I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I keep pumping things out. And I, and like, I think it's like an endless effort to like reel back in and make sure that you're not going too heavy in detail in each piece that you're working on, because mm -hmm. it can be it can like kind of be um, a bit of a wormhole. Like you kind of get yeah. like in a spot where you're just like a little stuck making things too detailed. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. and as far as like turnaround time for commissions, you know, uh, that's like, you know, kind of the, the, the thing that you want to avoid. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Most. So it's, uh, it's something I was talking to a buddy of mine about and he was like, he felt like if I were to go like simpler, it would still be effective. And I have to, I'm going to be looking to try to, you know, embrace that mentality. Um, mm -hmm. a little bit, some of the work that I do. So this is, uh, this is really cool. It, it inspires me to do just that. <clears throat> Let's see here. Ian replied again. How dare you, Ian? You just keep talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, they can be a real pen, pen to keep clean. Is that a pun? <laughs> Especially the smaller nibs. Was that a pun, Ian? What are you doing? <laughs> that was a weak pun, but I, I love you, so it's all right. Um, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in and asking questions and um, mm -hmm. being a part of this really appreciate the interaction. Um, I'm hoping, you know, that we can get more people and get stoked about this. And, uh, so I'm just going to keep, keep making these. So if you're tired of it, uh, sorry, I'm not going to stop. So. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> too bad for you. Um, all right. Yeah. So this piece is, is got, it, it's got layers and I really like this. Um, I, I like the, the continuous treatment of like the paws and the balls on the paws mm -hmm. um, is really awesome. And the expression on the face is sick. And this is obviously more of a woman, uh, a yeah. female uh, werewolf. So that's mm -hmm. rad. And um, this is an interesting decision that you made with the, uh, the segments, like the, uh, the moon um, uh, sequence and this straight up white silhouette always cool amongst black mm -hmm. work like especially like when there's a lot of detail around it mm -hmm. i love when people like just keep things completely solid white in some in yeah some it really draws the eye and um it it, it almost kind of like reminds me of like sinew like like kind of like organic uh you know viscera yeah I know that it's you know what i mean but yeah. i know that it's uh obviously like a hill but it, mm -hmm. it works on multiple different ways and it's yeah it's really cool. yeah and, then, and that was honestly something i even had in mind as i was doing it because like when you're drawing like like either like the viscera or like the trees or something it's like it's neat how like they all end up having these like similar shapes like yeah. regardless of what you're doing and i'm like well either way it works for like what yeah, I'm doing here. Absolutely. And I mean, I'm just catching like all these fun, like little details where the silhouette of the werewolf howling is not the same as the shadow, which yeah. is like a different expression. It's kind of like a different, like hulking sort of, 
you know, like it's got a completely different mood to it, which is really mm-hmm. fucking smart. And um, and then of course on the bottom is probably my favorite. The anatomy, um, the 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 sh- like the expression of like anguish going through mm-hmm. this transformation, fucking sick. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I was really like struggling for that one because like I had the image of like what I wanted to do like in my head, and right. I was thinking like, okay, I want like the beginning, like the really like painful transformation. And I want it to like, then have like the final, like at the top. Of and so course. I was thinking like, I want this to be sort of like a, when I was making it, I was thinking like a higher self sort of vibe where it's like, tripod, like I'm trying to like explain this eloquently. It's, it's kind of hard, but like um, thinking like the transformation as like both like a bad and a good thing to where it's yeah. like, it's like becoming like a powerful, truer version of yourself essentially. And so I wanted to show like the pain and the anguish of like the beginning stage where you're like not quite there yet. And yeah, that for the anatomy on that one, that was a me having to take some pictures uh, for sure. Sort of a reference for that one. (laughs) Excellent. I mean, uh, yeah, the, the fact that you just, uh, kind of touched on what your your thought process was on that and like what you would want to like what you were going for there it mm-hmm. it totally works it, it 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 comes across exactly as that and i'm a huge fan of like uh the uh dis- like uh expression of like not only like the human condition and struggle mm-hmm. and mental you know, hurdles, but then overcoming those things yeah, and becoming a powerful uh, version of yourself, mm-hmm. like, you know, really uh, uh, showcasing like um, the extreme side of, you know, mm-hmm. a, a person's like psyche or what have you that, that I'm all about that. So that is yeah. super sick. I feel like I want a print of that. I'm, I don't know. We'll have to talk about that, but yeah, I, I, now that like, I'm on break and I'm going to be actually graduating with my degree in the spring. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be actually focusing on like getting prints out, getting shirts made, stuff like that. And so that's definitely one that I'm going to be getting prints ready for. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really fucking something that I want. Like uh, (laughs) I want, I want to hang that somewhere because I resonate with that for sure. And I think uh, I, I'm, I I don't think I speak uh, just for myself when I say that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, yeah, Moribon said, uh, this one is so sick. I love it. The mid transformation at the bottom is done so well. Yeah. Thank you. Hard agree. Oh my, my uh, buddy Huey said, it gives me a movie poster vibe. Love it. Yeah. I could totally see that on like, uh, like some sort of uh, movie poster for sure. Yeah. Um, so like the composition, I was actually kind of inspired by like, the oh sorry my cat decided to join us here but I was inspired by more of like the sort of like 80s horror pulp art poster kind of compositions where you have like the foreground to like this random sort of middle scene and then the giant looming sort of background and so I'm glad that that's coming across (laughs) oops I keep trying to minimize uh the wrong screen there we go yeah so just uh (laughs) It really is so effective, and I really love the way that you 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 tackled this one. Super cool. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. This is cool. I like this. Were any of these for any commission work, or was this just personal work for you? Most of it was just personal. Like, the last one was definitely just, like, a personal, like, I don't want to say, like, it was, like, a vent piece or anything, but it was definitely more, like, personal, like, sort of like wanting to express something with that last one yeah you, this you one, nailed it. oh thank you this one was more like a personal little challenge for myself because in the summer i actually went to london with a group of friends and i'm like have a long ass plane ride nice. let's try to actually like knock out a quick piece on the way and so i love course, that you I'm were going to london. london of all places yep. yes uh, <laughs> that's fantastic um <laughs> You were literally making an American werewolf while going to London. Um, exactly. And that so, that was like, I was on the plane, like, ah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, 
Well, I also uh, back to the 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 discussion of prints and selling mm -hmm. prints. Um, we discussed this a little bit ago about how you know we were kind of both on the fence about like doing stuff with Etsy, and I, mm -hmm. I wanted to tell you that I just recently, like around October, like right after I was doing a, like an art market. Mm -hmm. I decided to put prints back online and I've been mm -hmm. selling stuff on Etsy again. And it's, it's, I think you would do well if you wanted to do it again. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I've been meaning right. to open it up again. Cause my shop's been like on vacation for like a year or yeah. like, <laughs> that was me. Like, yeah. Like a, like a few months ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but it, you know, all of that stuff still, you know, like, um, like any reviews that you had or anything, they're still right there. Okay. So like, you know, you can just go right back into it. And, mm -hmm. and it's, I think at this point, I feel like it's worth it. It's always rewarding mm -hmm. to be able to like send stuff to people that dig it. And, yeah. You know, like I like writing like little thank yous and stuff on sticker backs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Um, I like yeah. to do that. I like to give little notes because like to me, it's like it's just so like kind of like surreal that like some person that I have never met like in another state like digs my art enough to like buy it. Like yeah. that's just so crazy to me whenever that happens. So I am always like, thank you so much. And I'll yeah, give yeah. like little like stickers or something. And hell yeah, it, it's definitely a nice feeling. And I feel like um, uh, st speaking of stickers, I really I would love to see like most of these as stickers mm -hmm. and i have like a few ideas if you want i can tell you yeah I, i'd love to hear them <laughs> um but yeah like die cut stickers would be mm -hmm. fucking awesome and yeah i i have found some places that do them relatively uh, like it, reasonably priced mm -hmm. um okay. for the amount so it's definitely something I, i'll talk to you about after yeah yeah but, for um, sure but I like this profile and I'm starting to notice that um, the moons that you make are like mm -hmm. oblong. And I, and I know that it might not be something intentional, but I kind of mm -hmm. like it because I'm so used to seeing circular, like perfect circles mm -hmm. in, in artwork. And yeah. you know, it's kind of refreshing to see something that you clearly like made a circle by yourself without mm -hmm. like a trace, you know what I mean? It yeah. Was, kind of fucking awesome to be honest <laughs> yeah especially for for this one like i was doing it on the plane and everything and i wanted it to be more like i wanted like i honestly wasn't even going to do anything in the background i was just going to do black but i'm like well i mean if i do a little bit of a moon but not like a it's not this one i didn't want to be perfect so i guess in this one i was kind of trying for that yeah, that's. I mean, that's awesome. I love that you made that decision, and it and it and I, I feel like it comes across. And I think it was mm -hmm. really smart the way that you chose, like where the lines you chose to go. It's always mm -hmm. exciting for me when I'm doing something like that with a circle. I'm like, oh, I, I love how like this stays a little above that line, so it's not mm -hmm. like, you know, you don't want it to like run right into it because you want it to. Um, you want it to convey that it's behind, you know what I mean? You yeah. don't want it to look like it's some weird, you know, clash of lines and yeah. um, values. So yeah, really cool. I love that. Um, and, and did you choose to just go on, like stop at that margin where it was just that, like you just scanned it in and sent it? Yeah. For this one, I didn't actually have that piece scanned. That was just a photo from my phone because Whoa. I did it in this little sketchbook so that I could bring it on the plane. Oh shit. And then with Instagram's cropping, it wouldn't like let me like crop the image to where it was just black, so I had to leave that white line cuz I haven't been able to get it scanned yet. So, I'm going to also tell you uh after this, I will give you an app that I use to make mm -hmm. sure everything's cropped really well for Instagram. Yes, thank yeah. you. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, more than happy to do so. Um, this is really cool, too. I like this. Uh, again, like s following the same profile idea and then mm -hmm. also with uh, like a the circular shape like the moon, but now a sun mm -hmm. um, is really cool. And I like the treatment of the um, the armor, too. Thank you. And yeah, that one. Wait, go ahead. 
I was just going to say that one, like, I've been wanting to, like, not necessarily redo, but, like, do something along, like, similar, like, themes as that one with, like, mm-hmm. rendering armor. Because, like, I love seeing people render armor. It just looks so sick. So yeah, I've been I... wanting to do something kind of similar to that one again. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, seeing some really awesome rendered armor uh uh, not too long ago from, uh, I'm gonna, oh my God, why am I doing that? <laughs> Blanking on his name for some reason. Um, I think you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, uh why am I thinking, uh, damn. Wow. So that's a, that's my ADHD. That's real fun. <laughs> to me. Um, it's pretty embarrassing. You're good. Names are just like, no, I can't do them. Yeah, yeah. I'll think of it in a second. Um, it's no dig on him or anything like that. I just um, I just blank on shit. It's really, I think it's it's a little bit of red light syndrome, I think. Um, Moribund is saying, yo, there's a cat. That's cool. Yeah, he's uh, still, <laughs> he's right here. Uh, <laughs> about the last one, do you use any of the white gel pens or is that all pen with use of the white paper? I typically just use... Uh, pen on white paper like for this one I didn't use any gel on that one but for some like I have a white gel pen I typically use it like in like emergency if I like accidentally inked over a line that I wanted to be white or if I need to do like some sort of white extra detailing that I don't typically do but it's mostly just a black pen on the white paper got you Mm -hmm. hell yeah I mean white jelly roll pens are my best friend um Mm -hmm. uh i've embraced them for months on end now and uh it's been an astronomical difference in the way that Mm -hmm. i render things and the way that i feel a little less anxiety about making marks on a paper yeah because i can always go back over them in white if i need to and then even Mm -hmm. go back on top with black if i want to so yeah that's definitely something i would recommend if you haven't messed with too much Mm -hmm. um it's always it's always like helpful to really bring highlights out or Mm -hmm. you know bring something to the to the surface or even just um like accentuate things and like give like some extra detail of course, I like to, you know, do some like drippy shit every once in a while. Oh, yeah. Stuff. And yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely something that like after adding to my artistic arsenal mm-hmm. has just been a, uh, a, like right at the front lines. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I have one and like I'll use it occasionally, but like I definitely haven't utilized it like as I could be. Because again, like like I said earlier, I sort of just get into that groove of like what I'm used to doing. Right. And like I've been hoping like as I get more free time to be able to do more like experimental sort of stuff. Right. And I think the white pen would be sick. Yeah, definitely. Um, I also recommend uh, checking out what that's like with black paper, like starting mm. with a black surface and using white gel pens is really fucking cool. It's um, mm. it's it's interesting. It takes a little bit of time to get used to and I'm still like cutting my teeth trying to understand how to do it. But, uh, Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And I actually did find the name and then I just saw that Ian also said it. It's mystic barbarism. Yeah. 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 No, he's incredible. Yeah, seriously. And I just, I'm I'm terribly embarrassed about forgetting his name because I did a live stream with him. It was the very (laughs) first, youtube live stream um version of form terror friday so shame on me for not remembering (laughs) but it's seriously it is not like anything personal it is literally my brain going fuck you fuck you fuck you fuck you (laughs) so um yeah but anyway uh definitely something to check out if you Mm. wanted to um you know see what the idea behind like starting as as the the invert uh making something yeah. it's it's really interesting so yeah again back to this really love the sword mm-hmm. and that's and that's rad i think it's interesting because it's like forced profile it's like yeah. um, really like squished down almost like 2d mm-hmm. which is cool i like that 
Mm -hmm. I feel like you yeah. can see that, you know, on like a flag or something. Yeah, I was sort of looking at like, you know, like the kind of like silly, like medieval ones where it's like, they just have like their hand and like their arm and they're just kind of like kind of squished back like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, the funny thing is like, it, it's like, it's this hand. Yeah. Because it's in this, because if it wouldn't, it, 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 I think initially I looked at it like it would be like this, but then I was yeah. like, well, the hand's different. It's backwards. So it's like it's this, like, but yeah. then the wolf is like almost superimposed, but obviously not. And it's just yeah. like, Gah! yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is cool. I mean, like, I, I really like those kinds of things where it's like, maybe it was on purpose, maybe it wasn't, but it, it's it's still interesting to look at and it's striking. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you, you did did a really cool uh, thing with it. <clears throat> this is fucking rad. There's so much action Thank in this you. shot, in this piece. Like, I really love the moon rendering too. The stippling is smart. Um, it's always really fun to stipple a moon because I feel like it's yeah. not it doesn't take too much to like show it's a moon by yeah. doing that stippling, mm -hmm. but you, you did it really well. I, I feel like you used kind of uh, multiple like uh, size pens mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. This piece, I was like, I was really happy with the way this one came out with just like the sort of like more dynamic, I guess, kind of posing mm -hmm. where it's like in the middle of like very clearly like, there's a lot of movement going on, I guess, and it's just kind of frozen. Yes. Yeah, I, I love the movement that movement that's going on. Um, and I like where you chose to just call it, you know what I mean? I like mm -hmm. the like where it's where it ends. You don't need the whole image. You don't need the whole body to show what's going on. It's actually even more powerful because it's further in the foreground and mm -hmm. it's just showing you how like big uh you want it to like come across the yeah. hand is really awesome uh the perspective of the hand smaller in the background makes total sense and the and the trees are really awesome um it, it's it's like i i know that there are sometimes like when people will decide to do trees or like you know like what like you did before like you did earlier where it was mm -hmm. just white but then this yeah. one has renderings and it's like yeah, it's showing it's showing the uh, the the organic that element mm -hmm. of you know the bark and what have you really yeah. well. And again, with the fur treatment, just super sick. <laughs> that expression on that face is so rad too. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, like, when it comes to inking, um, and like following curvature uh mm -hmm. like to the way where it's like it doesn't even have to be like correct you know what i mean yeah. it just has to like feel <laughs> like it's essentially where you want it and where you don't yeah and i think you did it really well here like seeing where a shadow would be or where mm -hmm. a highlight would be and then the way that you rendered where that shadow would be is really awesome and thank um, you i feel like yeah yeah absolutely um, I don't want to steamroll you. You can talk. I just, uh, thoughts coming out of my brain. No, yeah, you're good. Any thoughts? Like, I'm just trying to think about, you know, what to say. Like, because I did this piece a while ago. And honestly, sometimes like, like what you were saying about rendering fur, sometimes like when I'm doing a new piece, like I have to like look at my old art to like mm. see how I treated it then. I don't know. Like sometimes I'm starting to like ink something out and I'm like, just getting stuck of like how I would like treat it. And I'll have to like, like I did it. Like it's my own art. I'm still like, just like kind of referencing it mm -hmm. and like, Oh, it's just so, it's so weird. So can I ask you like what, um, I always ask this to all the artists I talk to, yeah. but who would you consider to be your, um, like your favorite artists, you know, growing up, like inspiration, your, your, your influence. Hmm. I think right off the top of my head, like, um, oh, I'm gonna again, I'm gonna blank on the name, but um, it was like, uh, Bernie, what was his name? Uh, Wrightson, right? The oh, one with absolutely. The, yeah. yeah, his his work is, is like is probably amazing. the king. He's the oh king. yeah, just incredible. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I admittedly was super late to understanding some of the most like, like important ink artists because a lot of them did like comic books and, mm -hmm. you know, like 
I, I'm, I, I was uh, uh, just blown away by the Frankenstein um, oh, yeah. stuff that Wrightson's done. Mm-hmm. And uh, I came across a book that had been like compiled together in a uh, a bookstore but i just couldn't afford it i wanted to fucking buy it so bad i can't remember what it was called but it had a bunch of his different uh pieces in it over the over his mm-hmm. career and uh and i was like just yeah i wish i had the funds to be able to get it but yeah you know, those, those, those things aren't um cheap for a reason no. i mean he really is like the mm-hmm. king as far he as really is, yeah. king, and just the way that he rendered and the, the decisions he made mm-hmm. and the other person that I always uh, like talk about as far as like graphic artists uh, mm-hmm. that stuck out to me, especially like it re- like influenced me and just always blew me away was uh, this guy Virgil Finlay mm-hmm. um, who started working in the 1920s and if you don't know his work, you should check it out. Um, yeah, let me. What was that again? Let me write that uh, down. Actually, Virgil V I R G I L F I N L A. I'll put it in the chat. Too. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, because I I've not, I'm not familiar with any of their work. Oh, you'll you'll be pleasant. You'll you'll enjoy it. You'll okay. you'll very much be blown away like i have been um i've talked about it on many different um uh episodes of this Mm -hmm. and uh it also it also comes up in conversation uh in my buddy lee's podcast or um uh uh channel as well Mm -hmm. heavy uh heavy art talk and it's just it's a, a consistent thing to like reference because as far as ink artists go, he really, and like he also did clay, he did clay board with ink. And, yeah. And just the decisions and all the textures he was able to make um, is just amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on top of that, uh, if you're willing, if you're looking at his work, the, the person that I feel like really carries the torch for him now is my buddy. Um, he's called creep from six feet deep yeah his, Are you he's familiar? insane yeah i'm yeah, familiar Tyler pennington is like he's he's like the living embodiment of virgil finlay like i don't think he wants to exactly be like called that but it mm-hmm. is true like no one renders things like like he does yeah and it, yeah it's, it's rad so definitely if you don't know anybody that's watching um virgil finlay's work and after that also definitely check out the creep from six feet deep Mm -hmm. which i also have two separate um live streams i did on instagram a couple years back on form terror fridays when it first started and i'm going to be uploading those to the youtube as well so you should check those out when i get them uploaded i just have been slow uploading them (laughs) (laughs) um but anyway, yeah, so as far as, like, ink work goes, Bernie Wrightson, um, yeah, Ian, he's also an ink artist, uh, mm-hmm. said, uh, blah, 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 blah. okay, we got a couple of different ones here. So, yeah, he's a master of horror art. That's what Ian said. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, <clears throat> Maury Bond said a little bit ago, he said, there's a dude named Elliot J. Wells, which I've, I've definitely heard of him as well. Yeah. That makes some insane armor, too. That's who I thought you were going to say. Right. So we were talking about armor and rendering armor earlier. Mm-hmm. So that was that. Sorry I'm late to uh, popping these up, guys. Um, <laughs> I'm sure everybody else has been reading all along, but I was just trying to feature these as we go here. Uh <laughs> Uh, Eric Lanning, thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cycle of the Werewolf by Wrightson is pretty incredible. I can yeah. definitely see the influence. Okay, obviously that obviously. Is like, <laughs> that's like fucking on brand. So <laughs> I need to get my ass and uh, get my eyes on that shit very mm-hmm. soon. Uh, thank you, Eric Lanning. Thanks for being a part of this. Um, yeah, so again, like facial features really done well. And uh, yeah, I, I just love the I just love the consistency of your work. I, I, Thank you. it's, it's it's something that I struggle with, like 
consistently uh, about <laughs> doing something consistent in my life. But I think like, at least in my artwork, there's some consistency there. Yeah, but... I'd say you're, you're killing it with that, honestly. Like the one, what was the one you just posted with the original for the, the one for Frozen Soul? Oh, yeah, yeah. That um, one was killer, yeah. yeah. And a Vengeance shirt design, yeah. yeah. Trying to sell that shit. If anyone know, if you, if you know anybody that's looking to buy some original artwork, I have ink for sale, and I I could use the I could use the sale. Um, <laughs> saying holidays ain't cheap, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And like, it's just hard out there for everybody right now. So yeah, <laughs> I get it either way, you know. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you mentioning that. I mean, like, I don't know. It's it's like something that like half the time i'm just like i guess i'm just gonna move my hand this way for a while <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I'm like I'll, I'll do a rendering here like this because i feel pretty okay about that but then i'm just like well, I don't know, fucking no. <laughs> yeah yeah no when i'm working on something like i know some artists will like start at like one side or start with one specific thing and go in like a order that makes sense yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, I just like I'll just be all over the place so that's why like my in-between works in progress like I think they're like in such like a like trust the process kind of like ugly stage because I'll sure, be going but... like from one piece to like another side like oh I, I'm confident about how I'm gonna render right. this and I'm like I'm not so sure about this other section so I'll just wait and yeah, yeah and then it just kind of goes all over the place I hear you. I mean, I feel like it's it's a wonder like how some artists render. There's this guy, I believe it's um JH Black on Instagram. Mm, he, yeah. Have you ever seen the way he renders? I'm I familiar with JH Black. Let me double check real quick. I'm familiar with the name. I just like can't picture. Yeah, Jenglot Hatem. Um Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, well, he doesn't show a lot of process, so it might not be him, but he's incredible, by the way. Yeah. I mean, he is fucking insane. And he, oh my God, the, yeah. But uh, I'm thinking of someone else then. It might be X2, XII, MFAXI. <gasps> yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, so this dude, he renders. He, I, I watched him render something from the top to the bottom, almost like, like a printer. It was fucking insane. Yeah, he didn't. He just post like his like little work in progress of like that dragon head, and he's just going like, he's just yeah, starting with it. No, and just like, with no up. fucking lines established. He's literally yeah. black yeah. onto white, no sketches. Yeah, I'm watching that right now. Uh, he was doing a piece for Necrot. And I yeah. have the piece. It's called it. He did it for the song "The Blade," which is an excellent song by Necrot. Mm -hmm. And he was making. He made a shirt design for them, and the picture was like, uh, like in progress, but mm -hmm. it was all black where he had already rendered. Yeah. And then, and just white underneath, and it was yeah. like maybe some rendering past the black a little bit, but mm -hmm. it looked. It legit looked like a printer, like. Yeah, it, it it obviously wasn't that. It, there was like some mm -hmm. movement to it, but it was like kind of insane to to see that the way that that, that was rendered was like yeah. I don't know. It, it just kind of blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. I wish yeah, I no, that it. piece was sick, and yeah, and that uh song by Necrot was really good. Hell yeah, Crossfire, yeah. I fucking love that band. Shout out to Chad Gailey and fucking Luca and all those dudes. Yeah. Fucking Sonny. I love Sonny. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, either way. So, so yeah, let's move to another piece and talk about another piece. Unless, is there anything you want to talk about? I don't want to, like, steamroll this. Um, this. It's really just, it's very loose. No, I'm more, I'm good with just going along with, like, any sort of things you want to bring up or any questions, like, it's like hard for me to think about like what to bring up, you know, unless I'm like prompted almost. Of course. And I understand <laughs> that. I, 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 I'll keep us on the rails a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> if I can't do it for my own self, I can do it on this show. I think. Maybe. <laughs> um, all right. So yeah, Ian said, 
Oh yeah, that dragon mm-hmm. head process he posted is fucking insane. And yeah, just, no, that shit was just crazy. <laughs> I just looked at it myself and yeah, it's oh god damn. Some people mm-hmm. just blow me away. They just I, yeah. I don't understand how they can do it, but they do it and good. I'm glad they're out there doing mm-hmm. it because it's just so fucking entertaining and so yeah. mind boggling. But uh but yeah, let's move to another piece and talk about it. So, okay, yeah, fuck yeah. Um, again, like, I love the decisions you made. I feel like you stay consistent with, like, the the moon. Yeah. So this time it's, like, in front of the image of the werewolf. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then the silhouette slash, like, shadow, you know, work that you're doing with the, 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 the house in front is really cool is this um in reference to anything specific yeah that was in reference to like let me see i forget the name off the top of my head but i believe i have it somewhere let me find it yeah while she's looking i'm just encouraging everyone that's on here on instagram live to jump on the youtube because if you aren't you're dead to me no i'm just kidding (laughs) Yeah, that was um that one was in reference to um art for the movie Salem's Lot, but the Italian poster. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. Okay, I, I see that now because I, I know in like the uh, the actual like image that um that they show for the film, they have that same sort of treatment with the, yeah uh, with the silhouette. Um, that's cool though. I like that. Yeah, I wanted to kind of do more of like a a little bit more perspective with that one, I think, with the hand. And And again, like the the decision to black out where you did is really smart. Thank you. Very cool. Okay, we have gotten through the slides, but (laughs) you also mentioned that you made a mask and there's uh, some did. accompanying uh, like gloves into yeah like claws yeah yes I can actually show those off I have those right over here Hell so I was yeah, just thinking me... like because again like with how slow I typically do my work I don't yep. have like a lot of finished pieces to show mm-hmm. so I was thinking like well what other sort of like art things have I done yeah. And I'm like, well, different realm altogether, but still like something I made and everything. Yeah, I absolutely. Right I mean, any art is cool to talk about and and, and kind of like break down and get nerdy about. <laughs> yeah, so I um, made, yeah, I made the the head and it dude, like and it has the moving let me get my hand inside of it hold on one sec let me get you uh let me um oh if i remove yeah and it has like uh the jaws that move and everything so it mutes me every time i make it big for you um <laughs> let me, That's let okay. me try to remove this and see if I can make it any bigger. Would it be the other way around? So if I switched it, I'm still le- learning how to use this picture in picture. <laughs> no, that's yeah, not. Yeah, it won't be any help when it comes to computers and everything. I'll just. <laughs> no <mess> worries. <laughs> I think this is good. I just uh, don't know how to make it so it's just you on here. Okay. But. Yeah, this is good, I think. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I just uh, made this whole thing, and it has, like, a, basically, like, the mane of hair to come down the back. And so it's basically, like, on a, uh, like, a resin base for, like, the, the face and everything. And then, like, I have it uh, articulated so I can, like, move its mouth and everything and That's see, right. like, outside of, like, the little mesh by its eyes and everything yeah can you so you put it on and do you see out the eyes where you made the eyes or do you see out before where the eyes are or oh like right here 
Yeah, There's, like, nice. little mesh pieces smart. right there. So I can smart. see out there. And then, mm-hmm. like, I just airbrushed, like, the teeth and the mouth. And I used, like, a – it's kind of fading right now, but I used, like, a little glossy paint to make it look like it was, like, the mouth was wet, basically. Nice. And then just airbrushing and all that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's rad. I um I started to uh I got like really into the uh face off series, the yeah. sci-fi face off series and like just learning about how mm. um people were doing effects makeup was just super cool to me. I don't yeah. know. It's just cuz it's like not something I know of at all and Yeah. I, yeah, I always find it fascinating to hear and learn about like other forms of artwork. Mhm. So. Yeah, that made me really excited to sort of work on this because I had never done any sort of artwork that wasn't like with a pen on paper or something like right, that. Right, right. So I was looking at like I like FX work, people who do like um models for like horror, just like all sorts of cool stuff like that. Yeah. For references of like how to get the fur to move the way I wanted to, like how to like I don't know how to just airbrush its face and everything. It was just so neat, like getting into like a whole different style of art than I typically do. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. I dig that. I, I, I feel like I've uh, been more and more turned on to the idea of using airbrush or trying airbrush. Mm-hmm. I've never done it. So I, you know, I think it's uh, something that I'd like to do in the future. <laughs> but... Yeah. I, I liked the way the airbrushing went out. It was actually like, less difficult than I thought it would be. Yeah. It was just kind of, it was pretty satisfying actually. The only problem is cleaning it out after just sucks because just like little holes are so tiny. And like, uh-huh. if you let any paint stay in there, the next time you try to use your airbrush, it's just blocked. That so that goes, was like, yeah, no, keep going. Sorry. Yeah. That was the, that was the worst part for me. Just main the maintenance of the airbrush. Right. Right. And I, I just wanted to, Put it back to that's the same kind of maintenance issues that happen with rapidograph pens yeah yeah so yeah so that's, that's something i'd have saying. to get around but then yeah it has like a uh, hands that go along with it as well with just right. like silicone pads and like claws and everything that's so and cool I used, and you uh, made all of that yeah for the hands i used um like opera gloves like from spirit halloween because i didn't know how to like sew like my own gloves and then i sewed the fur and like the fleece on top so then it like goes on fantastic (laughs) i love that and it's reminiscent to the same treatment that you do of the paws with the balls on the the ink pieces yeah that was exactly what i was going for because like and I used the type of fur I used was um, national fiber technology fur that a lot of um, like people who make models and do FX work will use that fur because it's more like realistic sort of monstery sort of like nice. fake fur. So I use that for everything on it. And yeah, <laughs> that's really fucking cool. Um, thank you for sharing that because yeah. like, yeah, it's always interesting to see someone's other uh choice to you know like do, you know any any other art form that they have other than you know what might be um the main focus or whatever and that's um that's really sick i just think that like the 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 fact that you are like all encompassing werewolf uh <laughs> artwork is just so cool uh yeah thank you just, yeah really awesome um does anyone have any questions so yeah, any like, questions or so Maury Bond said, I bet you would kill 3D models. Yeah, I actually have a friend that um uh, someone I'm mutuals with on Instagram that does like really sick FX and modeling work. And I've been seeing her doing her like 3D modeling, and it's just like the way that they treat the anatomy is just so cool. That's it, that'd be really neat to explore. Hell yeah. I I dabbled and it's hard to do that in like a program. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's, uh, there's like endless uh, possibilities and potential for any of us to like learn new things. We all, we obviously have the, uh, 
you know, the ability to apply ourselves in certain artistic ways, but it, it it's always like, you know, it, it can be overwhelming thinking about yeah. jumping into a new form of artwork or a yeah, new for understanding sure. of how to create something. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm always, I'm always just embracing anybody's uh, interest in like jumping outside mm-hmm. of what they might already be doing. Um, but it's hard. It's, it's hard yeah. for me to even imagine like doing something different. It's it just because it, takes you out of your comfort zone right exactly yeah and then on top of that it's like it's time consuming and it's like mm-hmm. you also you know you've if you've created uh some sort of uh you know schedule for yourself to like uh, complete artwork you know art pieces for things like especially like commission work and things like that mm-hmm. it's like you have to be careful about how much you prioritize what you prioritize so yeah 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 that's how i feel with like sort of getting into like any sort of paint or color medium it's just i am so used to doing just the black and white even when i'm not using pen i'm using pencils and i'll do more like that's when i do like for stuff for biology like sort of wildlife pencil drawings and even that that's all black and gray so like if i'm like faced with having to do color that's just Mm. like such a challenge for me yeah yeah uh Mm -hmm. i'm with you there uh color is its own beast uh yeah i feel like the the furthest i extend with color or how or how much i have in the recent past has been um just digital and it's been flat (laughs) (laughs) but um you know i've been definitely kind of getting around to the idea of doing something with color soon yeah it's just uh (laughs) yeah uh, yeah Uh, it's gonna be it's a lot (laughs) yeah i'm hoping to start like what you said branching out and doing like color digitally i'm definitely Mm. planning on getting some sort of i'm saving up for like an ipad or something do some sort of digital work so then i can like slowly branch into yeah see you got it (laughs) So I can slowly branch into using color a bit more, but yeah. So me. Procreate and this mm-hmm. uh, this little here, this little here do yeah, exactly. They are, uh, they're game changers, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, for a while, I uh, was behind the curve, and a lot of other people are using it, and uh, a lot of friends that do tattoo work and yeah, uh, illustration artists and stuff were using them, and I was like, God damn. I got to fucking get with the times here and (laughs) pull for the extra, but you can actually find them pretty affordable now. Yeah. That's a a friend of mine just got one and she loves it and she uses procreate as well. So she's really, there's a learning curve there. It's a little, it's, Mm -hmm. you know, again, it's like getting outside of your comfort zone a little bit, but Mm -hmm. it's not terribly, um, it's not a huge leap from, you know, doing pen to paper. It's just, a little bit of a different feel um i will recommend if you do it mm-hmm. uh you know uh spring for the extra i don't know what it was 20 bucks or something like that and get the paper texture screen yeah that's yeah what i have I've heard that that's great yeah it's just it just makes it feel a little less unnatural you know mm-hmm. so yeah um so there's a question here uh and also people have just been uh marveling at your uh your your mask and your gloves thank Um, you i mean i can put it on but i'll do that more towards the end because it's gonna just mess up my whole face no worries (laughs) no 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 pressure um ian said wow uh eric lanning said fuck that mask is sick (laughs) ori bun said i bet you would kill 3d miles we talked about that uh, Ian said that's incredible. And then Eric just asked a question a little bit ago. He said, how did you apply the hair to the mask individually okay. glue in patches? Maybe it looks like it lays really naturally. And I agree. Uh, I was so also going to say something about that. But I, I did so. for this guy is for like the, this part of the face where I wanted to do like the almost no hair effect was just mm-hmm. fleece. And that I just laid on with hot glue and fleece works super well where you can just like, if you really press it down, like it'll lay really flat. 
And then so this like this fur came in like a like a yard of just fake fur. And when I had just the the base, I used duct tape to kind of pattern where I wanted like the hood and where I wanted like the fur to end on its face. And then I peeled the duct tape off and I used it to pattern the fur. And then I cut that off, sewed it together, and then I just hot glued it. So it's basically like in big pieces, essentially. Wow. Yeah, and then I just really cut cool. it to make it kind of fall the way I wanted to. Do you have any experience like cutting hair or anything? No, I just... Uh, <laughs> It's got like you know that's got some fucking glamour to it. Like yeah, there's there's some uh some like serious '90s part down the middle. Yeah. Uh, uh, fucking uh, Leo DiCaprio vibes going on there, <laughs> or uh, someone else with longer hair. That's cool. I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm wondering like. Have you made other masks? Like, do you have any other things that you've made like that? Or was this just like a, a one-off passion project or? This was the first time I've ever attempted making anything like this. Yeah. I had wanted to for a while because like, it was mostly for Halloween. Like I just obviously fucking love Halloween. And I'm like any excuse where I can dress up, wear some crazy shit's just awesome. And yeah. so that was sort of like my main goal. It was just like, I really think this would be sick to make one of these days. Dude, and, then it, and then I, I just, I made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I'm thinking like, like I could probably try my hand at either making another one or making like something else because it was pretty fun to do something more like physically with art, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but this was the only one I've ever done. I mean, yeah. for the first thing you've ever made like that, <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't imagine making something like that with that much detail and that much um, like precision to come off the way that that has. Like, kudos to you, man. That yeah. is fucking sick. Thank you. I was really nervous halfway through making this thing. I was like, I, I don't know how this guy is gonna turn out, but I'm pretty happy with it. I'll probably do some more airbrushing to give it a more like darker on the face or something but as of don't now you're crazy i mean it really does yeah. look amazing don't do the thing where you tinker you know what i mean oh yeah like, i've almost really call it done you know mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah i mean that's that's really cool I, I would love to see what you make next um mm -hmm. i, I want to see you do more of that because it's really it's really fucking fantastic thank um, you the i you know i recently talked to l taylor smelly l and, oh yeah you know, talk to her about her mask making and and mm -hmm. all of the fabrications and it's always just so fascinating yeah. to listen to uh how those things get molded and how they get created and things like that mm -hmm. so yeah she's definitely one of those people that you know you could probably reach out to for tips if you wanted to yeah um i don't know if you guys are familiar with each other but I think you I'm not actually i only just saw on the the stream but like i'll need mm -hmm. to actually check out her work then yeah she's really approachable you should just reach out and say hey and show her that shit and she'll be like <laughs> hell yeah like <laughs> that's fucking cool <laughs> yeah it's so cool i know when people will work with like making their own mask base like they'll have yeah. like the whole model and that's just that's so sick because i'll see them like they can they get so detailed with yeah. like the moss that they want to make it's so killer going back to face off yeah exactly <laughs> I don't care if I'm like promoting this right now. It's from like 2013 sci-fi channel. Like it's they just good put it on though. Netflix. But um, anyone who's interested in this kind of thing, like mask making, uh, special effects and horror films, stuff like that, watch Face Off. Not mm -hmm. the movie with Nick Cage and John Travolta. <laughs> That's also awesome, but in its own right. I'm talking Face Slash Off, and it's a sci-fi show that they put on Netflix. There's two seasons and it is fucking cool because yeah, like you said, like they're, they're creating all these molds that are just like so super fucking detailed. And they're also doing it on a time crunch, which is, yeah, really impressive. which is, so, that's just crazy. I can't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, like, that shows hella sick. I, I remember they did, I don't know if it was a specific episode, but, or a specific contestant that was doing their work was based off of one of my favorite shows, Grimm 
where they used a lot of practical effects for their monster designs. And so I watched that and I was like, that's just, that's so cool. Because nice. I thought I that both of them had the coolest creature designs. So uh, is Grimm anything to do with the, uh, uh, the Brothers Grimm or is it just its own thing called Grimm? Yeah, it's essentially like, it was again, it was like from 2013. I think it was originally on NBC. It was basically like a modern retelling of the Brothers Grimm. So the premise was like that the everything that they wrote about was like true stories. And like all of these like creatures and folklore were like still like among us essentially. Right. And so they utilized some really cool creature designs. And that was one of the reasons why I really liked it. Hell yeah, that's really cool. Uh, I feel like I may have seen that in passing mm -hmm. somewhere. So I, I'll, I'll have to check it out because I'm always looking for weird shit to watch while I'm not parting. Oh yeah. Yeah. If or you like anything parting, weird, but... you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll dig it. <laughs> so Eric Lanning mentioned Rick Baker. Mm -hmm. um and then uh he said god damn rick baker <laughs> is rick baker an effects uh artist i yeah I he did title. work for american werewolf in london right and okay so, yeah, right. yeah he won the um the oscar for the special effects for that movie and so him and then what was the other name there's another artist on instagram i think it's mcgee fx who does a lot of uh, werewolf models from Baker's Designs. And nice. they were big uh, references for when I was making this because I wanted to go for that sort of werewolf style as well. Excellent. But yeah, he, he's insane. Yeah, hell yeah. Nice nice, uh, nice, nice uh, uh, addition there, Eric. Really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um, Maury Bun said, yeah, if that's the first time th thing, holy shit, <laughs> keep cranking those out. Definitely <laughs> agree. Thank Absolutely. you. Christine Dion. That's my girl. She is amazing. That's my mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. Always good to like have, you know, the family supporting artistic <laughs> endeavors. Because uh, not every parent is like, you know, supportive of that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cheers to Christine. Yes. Uh, thank, thank you. you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, your daughter is very gifted. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I just got a text from my dad saying, we're watching you right now. Oh, awesome. Very <laughs> cool. I guess I'll uh, mind my manners. I, uh... <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, I'm really stoked that uh, we could get a chance to talk. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I want to definitely stress that you keep doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? Thank like, you. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. You I have, like... Go ahead. I have a couple, um, when we were talking about the one with the armor, I'm working yes. on one right now with sort of like the medieval armor theme. Like it's probably not going to show up super well, but like I'm working on this dude right now. Wow. Sick. Yeah. So again, again with the a... profile, that's rad. And I like <laughs> how it just keeps coming in. Uh, and I like how you, you uh, put the crescent moon in the armor as well to continue that theme. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really cool just to see that you're continuing the same idea, but with different ways of attack, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also really super psyched about this collab I'm doing with uh, Instagram name. It's One Sixth Bastard, who makes okay. incredible... Uh, six scale uh movie replicas and he's doing a run of the werewolves from american werewolf in london and i'm lucky enough to be doing the box art for his release so uh, I'm working on that right now, and like this is like how it's coming along trying to get it in the frame damn i love it that's exciting i love that you're doing stuff for uh for packaging that's yeah yeah i'm amazing. super excited yes. about that collab Yes, that rules. Um, I, I definitely look forward to seeing the finished product of that. And maybe I'll try and snag something. I'm not sure mm -hmm. how much of that stuff's going to go for. But, <laughs> but I'll definitely, really cool. this would be a design I'd be probably getting scanned and doing prints for to like collector stuff. So oh, hell yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I'm definitely interested in, uh, in, 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 in acquiring a print of your artwork. So we should definitely keep in touch in that aspect. Yeah, for nice. sure. Does anybody else have any questions? 
Yeah. For Danielle. Questions? For Danielle's mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this has been really cool. I love that everybody, uh, I love that there have been people coming and interacting with us and asking yeah. questions. It always, it always keeps things interesting and mm -hmm. we make uh, we make sure to talk about all the things that you guys mentioned. So I mm -hmm. hope that um, the people that are watching right now are uh, interested in what I'm doing. Follow me, uh, hit that bell so you can get um reminders of the new episodes that was that we're going to be doing um i've got a lot planned for 2024 um there are many other artists that are doing really cool stuff on youtube mm -hmm. there's really awesome interviews happening in like-minded um ideas so uh definitely just get on the youtube train man everybody's mm -hmm. doing some really cool stuff lately with youtube um when it comes to like dark artwork uh mm -hmm. heavy music artwork um so definitely want to shout out a few people um lee heavy art talk really crushing it doing some really cool stuff with my buddies riddick daniel shaw uh he does some panels i'm gonna be doing some panels and uh so we got some we got some cool stuff uh coming up daniel shaw has his own page um, he's doing live uh, inkings, which is really fucking cool. You get to talk to him in real time while he's making stuff because his brother is answering or, or, or giving him the questions and answering the questions while he's able to like focus on making the artwork. And that is just, it's so cool. I got to take part in that yesterday. So shout out to Daniel Shaw, shout out to Lee, shout out to Mark Riddick, um, and everybody else, Shoggoth Kinetics, Mark Riddick, and Lee are going to be doing a live uh, stream uh, tomorrow at 9 p.m. And they're going to be doing uh, what's called an exquisite corpse three times over. So what an exquisite corpse is, is the head, the middle, and the bottom uh, of a piece are all being collaborated on. One person is doing the head, the middle... Mm -hmm. and, and the bottom each so then they're and they're mixing it up so it's definitely going to be something to check out i'm sure there's going to be a lot of friends that pop on there so definitely mm -hmm. take take a gander at that and, and uh interact and stuff and then uh hopefully we see you back here with my next episode um uh i'm not you know we don't have to stop right now but i'm just going through a couple of yeah. things um, yeah for sure and, and i also want to i like to mention that you know our next guest if i'm gonna do you know a, around the end or sometime i like to mention the next guest on here and i am very excited to be interviewing and hanging out with none other than christoph spagel who i hope i'm pronouncing correctly <laughs> But he is what's con who's considered the Lord of Logos. So we're going to be talking mm -hmm. in depth about logo work. And this guy is the guy who fucking made logos what they are today. Like they are anyone who's making, especially black metal logos, mm -hmm. heavy metal logos in general, know about what a logo looks like from his logos. He did the original Emperor logo. Yeah, and, that's a killer and, yeah, logo. Incredible. And he really set the bar for mm -hmm. um, uh, symmetric logos, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. for metal. And uh, I'm very excited to be talking to him. I've, I've known him for a few years, and uh, he's just a, a jolly old man, and I love him. So <laughs> we're going to be talking, uh, and that's actually um, very soon. That's not this week. But next, on the 29th, we're going to be talking. So I'll have posts about that, and we'll and we'll do that. But I hope to see you also if you want to contribute and ask questions. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be cool. Um, but anyway, so that out of the way, is there anything mm -hmm. you want to talk to me about? Is there anything you want to mention? Hmm. Can't. Can't really think of anything. I'm just uh, again now that uh, my uh, college career is sorting, sorting to wrap up a bit. 
I'm definitely yeah. going to be uh, a lot more active with my art, like creating a lot more, posting a lot more and getting prints, getting stickers, getting shirts made is going to be like a priority for me in the, in 2024. So I'm really hoping to like really sort of get that stuff, that get that stuff going, you know? That's awesome. That's great to hear. I really look forward to seeing all of that because you really do have a, a sick gift and an awesome way of going about, um, you know, creating your werewolf uh, artwork. And um, I got to say, like, I'm interested in what you're studying in biology because I just, the biology is fascinating. It's never yeah. not going to be, you know what I mean? But um, like what, so what have you been um, mostly drawn to about learning uh, biology? So, yeah, I, I'm getting my degree in just a uh, very broad bio, but my focus is primarily with ecology. And that's basically just like the way ecosystems and all the organisms in them interact. So very like wildlife bio mixed with like plant bio and just like how it all works together in this one big, like super complicated web essentially. And so that's my biggest focus. And with that, just anything, I mean, as you see with my arts, anything animalistic sort of like that, any animal super into. So I've been doing a lot of work with, uh, with wildlife, with birds, with my studies, nice. which has been super cool. That's rad. I mean, right up my alley. Um, I'm, I don't know if you uh, know, but I like fungi. I like mushrooms. Yeah. I like things um, like, especially what you said, network. Like that's the first thing that I think of when I think of like, uh, you know, as far as like communication between plants and uh living organisms and things like that i think of uh mycelium and yeah i was just gonna say network uh mm -hmm. in, in communication with like trees and, mm -hmm. and things that are just uh, like in, in ways that just just baffle me i mean it's just incredible like what nature um has that we just we just coexist with or, you know, just kind of live amongst, but just like, don't really think about like most of the time, unless yeah. we're really studying something or really like mm -hmm. looking into um, the intricacies of, you know, that life form because we just, yeah, we just like, we just go uh, about our days doing stuff for jobs and money and, mm -hmm. and like, we just get lost about like, just how incredible the nature is around us mm -hmm. and like, yeah yeah it's always good to just pull yourself back in and be like hey like these organisms these living breathing sometimes you know like thriving um life forms are just incredibly complex just like yeah. human, you know just mm -hmm. like humans but it, it is it's it, it really is like baffling it's 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 very fucking cool and beautiful yeah and there's like with all like those complex interactions with the mycelium and with trees like that network has like the implications just for like ecosystem construction to like conservation mm -hmm. is just like insane like when you think of like a simple like tree you don't think of like everything that's going into it with like right. the interactions with the soil, with fungi, with just everything. It's just, yeah. it's just so broad. I think that's what really draws me to it. Like, it's just so complex. Yeah. There, there's just so much mm -hmm. to learn and, and it can be overwhelming, but it's still, it's yeah. just all so beautiful. Um, so a couple of more people's uh, things they said. Um, let's see. Uh, so my buddy Huey said, you are very talented. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. And then Eric Young, thanks for joining us, said, uh, love your werewolf art. So that's rad. We also love her werewolf art. <laughs> and then your mother said, great show. Thanks for having my girl on your show. Absolutely. Agreed. A, Agreed. Thank pleasure. you. It was a pleasure, Christine. Um, yeah. Uh, and thank you for joining and, and interacting. Really appreciate that. 
So everybody that's watching, um, please share this, show people what I'm doing. Um, I want to do more with this. Mm -hmm. um, like and subscribe and share it and, um, you know, grab the notifications so that you don't miss what we're doing next because there's I got a lot planned. So it's going to be fun. And uh, again, support other artists, support mm -hmm. small businesses, support people that are creating things not only for money but just passionate you know artists out there doing their thing and encourage people to make more art don't discourage mm -hmm. people you know what i mean the whole thing about what i'm doing here is mostly to inspire other people and to remind other people that are aspiring artists that like we all go through these hurdles we all go mm -hmm. through these challenges of figuring out how to make artwork how to render artwork, mm -hmm. how to, uh, you know, stay in the zone enough to make something and call it done, you know, call it. Yeah. Done. Um, because it's really, it's not always easy to, to do that. And sometimes people, uh, you know, start something and then they get discouraged and they just, they can't seem to get themselves back into something without putting it down. And sometimes it just gets, it just collects dust and, I guess mm -hmm. that like, you know, it's okay. You know what I mean? It's not something you should like harp on and like, look at like your failure about it's more about, you know, building your abilities to continuously grow and create more things. You know what I mean? Everyone hits those walls. Yeah. And all the artists I talk to, mm -hmm. they all have, times where they just get stuck and then there yep. are coping there are ways to go about that to get back into what you want to do you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so i always ask you know artists like what they might do when they get creative blocks and stuff like mm -hmm. that so i guess my question to you is there anything specific that you might do to kind of recharge yeah typically like I get creative block constantly uh -huh. and usually like if I'm working on like a big piece, like something like this, it's really like, I feel pressure essentially to like make this like something, you know, yeah. like and that pressure only makes the creative block worse. So if I'm trying yeah. to get out of block, like I find sketching just random things is just like the most helpful way. Like I'll bring yep. this thing like to work. So on a break, I can just like whip out a pen, whip out a pencil and just low stakes, low effort, just drawing, whatever, random little exactly. sketches of anything. And that just sort of gets me back into the groove of like drawing again, but with low pressure. And then I start to feel like the creative juices flowing again. Nice. So sketching, honestly, that helps me the most. Yeah, I feel like there's a common theme there when it when it comes to getting stuck. Um, obviously, like taking a break, you know, changing the scenery is always good. Maybe just like, you know, jumping out of the like getting outside of the atmosphere, atmosphere that you're really in when you're creating something. Yeah, um, is important. But uh, on top of that, just drawing. You know what I mean? Even if it yeah. looks like shit that's the way you get back to it is like you get past all of the the stuff that you don't want to use mm -hmm. you know what i mean the getting like the chicken scratch out and getting all the 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 doodles and like stuff that you just probably never interested in actually putting out into the world mm -hmm. you have to you know you have to do that sometimes to get back in the flow of what you want to create yeah so yeah it's that sort of like low pressure just doodling and just getting used to it again basically right yeah absolutely it's uh it's definitely something that you know every time i feel like i get stuck in a like a situation like that yeah i think there's a, a contributing factor is the pressure mm -hmm. um if there's a deadline, if there's a commission or multiple commissions, but the thing is, you know, you, you have to be careful not to burn yourself out. And that's yeah. something that 
can be difficult, you know, because if you're on a time crunch or if you're looking to make sure you get something done at a certain time, you know, that it is not easy to lock in all the time. Right? Yeah. And everybody's got a different mindset and a different world going on around them that they have to, um, you know, navigate. But um, for the most part, I think the biggest thing is really just sketching out, getting past those hurdles with just yeah. whatever comes out. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, inspiration will strike if you, you know, if you're making the right line work on the page, you, you see something, you're like, I could do something cool with this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And kind of expand on it. And mm -hmm. I think like one of the one of the like cool hacks that i've found to be really helpful um it, when you have an ipad and mm -hmm. you have like the ability to just do whatever you can just you don't even have to like look at it and go this is trash and throw it out or put it off to the side or anything you can just get rid of the layer you can not yeah. even get rid of it you can just un you, make it invisible invisible yeah. so that you're able to just start from scratch or do whatever or build off of it with another layer and not mm -hmm. have to commit which yeah for me is, i think yeah. that would definitely help me that's one of the another reason why i'm like planning on expanding and getting that ipad just because like especially if you're using ink yeah it's like every move you make feels so permanent right. and i think that like definitely contributes to that blockage because you're like you feel restricted by like, if I make this mark, it's black ink, I can't really go back. But if you're working digitally, it's like, okay, I can see how this looks. I didn't like that. Erase it. But you don't have that like permanence as much. Yeah. And that, which, I feel like you know, it could be so the, freeing. Right. And I feel like, you know, that's a kind of, it's, um, there's something that's really can be, you know, appreciated about people that don't use that kind of, um, mm -hmm uh uh tool like where they don't have to where they don't like let themselves you know unravel in that sense like not mm -hmm. unravel but like they don't like rely on i don't know how to explain it like i feel like there are artists that um probably work better because of those circumstances yeah you know what I mean? But then there are others that like it could benefit. And I feel mm -hmm. like I'm one of them. Um, but then it's like, there's a transfer process. If you're not willing to complete a piece mm -hmm. in, in procreate, which like is a whole other thing. And mm -hmm. I guess for me, I've been learning, like, like I just made a piece that, and it's like almost done fully in procreate where yeah. I'm going to like actually be done with it in procreate. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's a little bit of a, a comfortability thing with me, like that I have to get used to there. Yeah. Um, because you know, it's like fighting the idea that it looks too digital is something that I've struggled with. Yeah. I know a lot of people like have like a weird mentality with like yeah. digital art and like yeah. saying it, it's like, it, yeah, like it has, it's too digital or something. And it's like, yeah. I think that's just so restrictive for any artist because it's like, you can't be putting someone in a box just because of the medium that they're using, like, because you can express it in so many different ways. I know with Procreate, like the brushes, everything like that, like, I don't know. That, that's like a weird mentality that a lot of people have, I've noticed. Yeah, I. but the thing is, I think like, because technology has advanced over the years, like, my hangups about it are mm -hmm. different now because like you said, the brush settings can be like, so like meant to look natural, um, yeah, which kind of like softens the blow of what a digital line used to look like. Yeah. And for me, like it was a complete turn off when I could tell it was a digital line from like, say um, a graphics tablet or something. Yeah especially working in Photoshop for me, it was like last resort. If I wanted to like mm -hmm. fix something in Photoshop, it was like kind of painful to do for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get that. Cause like you have this sort of like kind of mental like image of like yeah. how you want your line work to look. And like, right. 
the digital lining, you're right, with some of those brushes, it just looks too, like, perfect, for lack of a yeah. better word. And, yeah, like, yeah. that's, like, weird at times. No, I get it. It, it's, it is. It's, like, if the lines are too um, straight and they're yeah. too, like, just, you know, produced in, in a way that's robotic, it's mm -hmm. it's a turnoff for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in some ways it can look a little like lazy, but mm. I, I mean, I do, I also had, I was of the mind that like a lot of work, especially like early two thousands, um, anything digital, even it was, if, even if it was painted digitally with like digital brushes and stuff, it was, I just never, it never really resonated with me. And like, yeah. I think it's just a style, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, preference, but I think over time it's become something to appreciate way more, um, yeah. when it's done tastefully, um, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, really no, I totally agree. Yeah. And that's, and that's just that I'm, I'm not even touching on AI today. But oh no i like can't even get into that <laughs> no, that's i'll have a separate i'll have a separate um episode for that because that's long overdue yeah but, um but yeah so you know digital has its place um but i feel like specifically for me um it's a fine line uh, mm -hmm. between something that i can be okay with releasing into the world um versus something that i'm just like this is a sketch this yeah. is going to be transferred onto paper you know? yeah exactly um, i think yeah. it's just going to be it's going to come down to just the artist and right. their own preferences and what they feel comfortable releasing out there like you said exactly yeah so with that, um, I don't know, it's, uh, it's 6.30 ish, kind of almost 6.40. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about? Nothing again, nothing really comes to mind. I'm just like, this has been really chill. And I've, again, thank you so much for having me on here. Absolutely. I, I mean, it's, it's my pleasure. I really love to be able to talk to different artists about their mm -hmm. work and where the influence comes from and techniques and things like that so this is just a cool you know uh experience overall mm -hmm. i think and like I, like i said i feel like i just want to inspire people mm -hmm. and um and connect um whether it's other people being connected or me being able to connect with others and learn about stuff so yeah really is a treat i appreciate you mm -hmm. yeah i appreciate you all right. Well, with that, I think we're going to sign off. Um, I want to once again, thank everybody that tuned in and interacted mm -hmm. with us. Um, I feel like I like kind of fake closed the show and then everyone was like, yeah, it's done. And then, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this is all, this is all just stuff that I learn as I go doing this. So yeah. I'm only gonna, you know, improve over time, but it's exciting. I'm, I'm definitely mm -hmm. stoked for what's coming up. So uh, thank you again, Danielle, so much. Mm -hmm. um, really appreciate you uh, coming on and showing us what you what you make. Please mm -hmm. continue doing what you do. I want to see more masks and gloves mm -hmm. and things that you create outside of the 2D world. Um, and I also really look forward to uh, uh, attaining some prints of yours, or mm -hmm. you know, I'll, yes, I, I'll, those... begin, I'll, I'll tell you about the the con the connects that I. You know, yeah, for sure. Because those that, that's my top priority: getting prints out, getting stickers, like expanding. Oh, yeah. So that that'll be coming yeah, yeah. on. Yeah. Sick. All right. Well, we'll talk in a second. I'm just gonna sign us awesome. off. And, uh, and once again, thank you so much. Cheers, mm -hmm. guys. Thank you so much for Christoph. having me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Christoph Spagdal, the 29th, mm -hmm. December 29th. Fucking come hang out. <laughs> All right, y'all. See ya.